In today's video, we're going to be installing and testing a handful of overclock speeds to determine which is best for the Sega Genesis Model 2. In a previous video, we put the Model 1 through its paces and tested a handful of overclock speeds to determine which speed was king. After hours of gameplay, it was apparent that the 10 MHz overclock was the best option. It balanced out the pros and cons both visually and playability wise. I can't say that I wasn't disappointed though. I was really hoping that the Model 1 could handle a higher clock speed better. So in leading up to this video, I assumed that the newer revision of the Model 2's hardware would allow me to push it a little bit harder and then squeeze out maybe a little bit more performance. Just as we did in the previous video, I'm gonna start with a nine megahertz overclock. From there, we'll go 9.6, a 10, a 10.752, an 11, 11.64, a 12, a 12.52, and then the Hail Mary 16 megahertz. And just as I did previously, spoiler alert, we actually didn't fare too well past 11 megahertz. This is surprising to me because I actually have read up on a lot of people making it past 12 megahertz overclock. While I won't dive into that too deep yet, I first wanna start off by going over my install and setup for this video. Overclocking the Model 1 is just as easy as overclocking the Model 2. If you haven't checked out my Model 1 overclock install, I definitely recommend giving that a watch. We start first by locating the Motorola chip on the motherboard. The clock pin that we'll be tapping into is pin 15 on this chip. We first start by locating the correct starting pin corner. In this case, we're looking for the number 10, counting over five pins, and we found pin 15. Once it's found, we add a little flux, heat the pin up, lift the pin, and then bend it back into place. In order to easily swap between oscillators, I actually built a standoff board with the proper connections and wire leads. If you're looking to install a single oscillator, this is an unnecessary step. You'll actually though want to install a toggle switch so that you can toggle between standard clock and overclock. This helps when games glitch out or if you want to run 32x games, they just won't run overclocked. If you want to see a more in-depth video on the toggle switch install, check out this video next. The oscillators require 5 volts in and a proper ground. After testing around the motherboard, we found that CE20 actually outputs 5 volts of power off the positive leg, so we wired in the positive lead. We then wired ground to the negative leg on CE25. All that's left to do is wire up the clock output into pin 15 on the Motorola chip. Now we can hot swap the oscillators. Now that the install is complete, let's look through some gameplay footage and compare.
I guess I can't be too upset because the Model 2 actually did handle overclock speeds a little bit better than the Model 1, if only very slightly. Most games ran up to about 10.752 fine, and some even ran at 11, but most just fell apart. In the end, I think I might install up to a 10.752 MHz overclock into the Model 2. It did feel a bit snappier while not causing too many visual glitches. If you're looking to install this into your Model 2, you could still go conservative and drop in a 10 MHz overclock and still be happy. I really am going to dive a little bit deeper into how people were able to achieve higher clock speeds than I was. Off the top of my head, I was thinking that maybe all my oscillators weren't 5 volts run, or I wasn't getting proper voltage to them. This was quickly put to rest by checking out the spec sheets on each oscillator and making sure they were 5 volts, as well as I was testing power while the games were running. All in all, I guess my pursuit for the ultimate overclock beast of a Genesis continues, and you can bet it's not over. Keep posting on my channel for more mods and repairs, and remember, a like and subscriber always appreciated. Thank you again for your support, and we will catch you guys later.